Mystery airships, or phantom airships, are a class of unidentified flying objects best known from a series of newspaper reports originating in the western United States and spreading east during late 1896 and early 1897. According to researcher Jerome Clark, airship sightings were reported worldwide during the 1880s and 1890s. Mystery airship reports are seen as a cultural predecessor to modern claims of extraterrestrial piloted flying saucer style UFOs. Typical airship reports involved nighttime sightings of unidentified lights, but more detailed accounts reported ships comparable to a dirigible. Reports of the alleged crewmen and pilots usually describe them as human looking, although sometimes the crew claimed to be from Mars. It was believed that the mystery airships were the product of some inventor or genius who was not ready to make knowledge of his creation public. For example, Thomas Edison was so widely speculated to be the mind behind the alleged airships that in 1897, he was forced to issue a strongly worded statement, denying his responsibility. It has been frequently argued that mystery airships are unlikely to represent test flights of real human manufactured dirigibles, as no record of successful sustained or long-range airship flights are known from the period, and it would have been impossible, not to mention irrational, to keep such a thing secret. On the contrary, however, there were in fact several functional airships manufactured before the 1896 and 97 reports. For example, Solomon Andrews made successful test flights of his Arian in 1863, but their capabilities were far more limited than the mystery airships. Most journalists of the period did not seem to take the airship reports very seriously, as after the major 1896-97 to wave concluded, the subject quickly fell from public consciousness. The airship stories received further attention only after the 1896-97 newspaper reports were largely rediscovered in the mid-1960s, and UFO investigators suggested the airships might represent earlier precursors to post-World War II UFO sightings. The best known of the mystery airship waves began in California in 1896. Afterward, reports and accounts of similar airships came from other areas, generally moving eastward across the country. Some accounts during this wave of airship reports claimed that occupants were visible on some airships, and encounters with the pilots were reported as well. These occupants often appeared to be human, though their behavior and clothing were sometimes reported to be unusual. Sometimes the apparent humans claimed to be from the planet Mars. Historian Mike Dash described and summarized the 1896 and 1897 series of airship sightings, writing, Not only were the mystery airships bigger, faster, and more robust than anything then produced by the aviators of the world, they seemed to be able to fly enormous distances, and some were equipped with giant wings. The 1896-1897 airship wave is probably the best investigated of all historical anomalies. The files of almost 1,500 newspapers from across the United States have been combed for reports, an astonishing feat of research. The general conclusion of investigators was that a considerable number of the simplest sightings were misidentifications of planets and stars, and a large number of the more complex the result of hoaxes and practical jokes. The Sacramento Bee and the San Francisco Call reported the first sighting on November 18, 1896. Witnesses reported a light moving slowly over Sacramento on the evening of November 17th at an estimated 1,000-foot elevation. Some witnesses said they could see a dark shape behind the light. A witness named R. L. Lowry reported that he heard a voice from the craft issuing commands to increase elevation in order to avoid hitting a church. Lowry added that he believed the apparent captain to be referring to the tower of a local brewery as there were no churches nearby. Lowry further described the craft as being powered by two men exerting themselves on bicycle pedals. Above the pedaling men seemed to be a passenger compartment, which lay under the main body of the dirigible. A light was mounted on the front end of the airship. Some witnesses reported the sound of singing as the craft passed overhead. The November 19, 1896 edition of the Stockton, California Daily Mail featured one of the earliest accounts of an alleged alien craft sighting. Colonel H.G. Shaw claimed that while driving his buggy through the countryside near Stockton, he came across what appeared to be a landed spacecraft. Shaw described it as having a metallic surface that was completely featureless, apart from a rudder and pointed ends. He estimated a diameter of 25 feet, and said that the vessel was around 150 feet in total length. Three slender, seven-foot-tall, apparent extraterrestrials were said to approach from the craft while emitting a strange noise. 
The beings reportedly examined Shaw's buggy and then tried to physically force him to accompany them back to the airship. The aliens were said to give up after realizing they lacked the physical strength to force Shaw aboard. They supposedly fled back to their ship, which lifted off the ground and sped out of sight. Shaw believed that the beings were Martians, said to kidnap an Earthling for unknowable but nefarious purposes. This has been seen by some as an early attempt at alien abduction. It is apparently the first publicized account of explicitly extraterrestrial beings attempting to kidnap humans into their spacecraft. Many more reported incidents occurred throughout the next couple of years, but lacking detail, there isn't really much to interpret. One witness from Arkansas, allegedly a former state senator Harris, was supposedly told by an airship pilot during the tensions leading up to the Spanish-American War that the craft was bound for Cuba to use its gun to kill Spaniards. In one account from Texas, three men reported an encounter with an airship and with five strangely dressed men, who asserted that they were descendants of the lost tribes of Israel and had learned English from the 1553 North Pole Expedition, led by Hugh Willoughby. These encounters happened a long time ago, but it would be stupid not to take them seriously. They each hold incredible detail told by witnesses who would have little to no reasons for twisting the truth. The explanation offered by so-called experts that these airships were planets and stars is ridiculous. Our cowboy friends saw something in the sky those faded nights. However, I'm not sure we'll ever learn the truth. What do you think?